Wow, what a year this has been, both inside and outside the game. But you don't want to hear about real life. You want to know how Sea of Thieves fared in 2020. I can definitively say this has been an interesting year in terms of updates to say the least. I would say 2020 was a bit of a mixed bag, especially compared to 2018 and 2019 for the game. I know the developers have been working from home, but let's see how well they did anyway. Here it is, the 2020 in-depth review for Sea of Thieves. Those who have been playing since day one will remember how different the attitude to updates was in 2019 and 2018, and how Rare moved away from those quarterly updates to the monthly cycle in August 2019. I for one much preferred the old method of updates, and you'll see why shortly. I feel like one month was never enough to make an update feel life-changing, and when there's a couple off months, it's hard to be excited for new updates. But let's cast our mind back to January. After the Christmas lull, Rare came out with this modest update that added a bunch of cosmetics and edible tattoos for those who could find the easter eggs scattered around the map. As far as I know, they didn't add any of these easter eggs for the update, but were based on pre-existing ones. They added a short amount of text for finding one which gave you a hint on what the easter egg was based on. These ranged from Griffin, who ate a banana with a peel on during an interview, or a rickroll on Reaper's hideout in true pirate fashion. Or should I say, Merrick roll? Rare also added Umbra's journals. These were little lore tidbits that were found around the seas to recount some of the previous in-game and lore-based events that unfolded previously. This update also changed Reaper's chests, where players were instructed to give them to the masked stranger. Along with this, the tomes continued, adding the five tomes of fire and some more Ash and Dragon cosmetics. Thankfully, a whole host of female and basic clothing options were added to the regular store, which as far as I know was the only update to the clothing stores in the whole of 2020. The black market received another update too, with more recolored cosmetics or continuations of existing sets. These were from the mercenary and aristocrat sets for doubloons, and para and corsair sets for gold. Duke also gave everyone a free gilded voyage, so that's nice. The Pirate Emporium got the lion's share of items, with a boatload of paid cosmetics including the cameo inspired elemental power set, lunar festival pet outfits and items, three emote packs and some kraken pet outfit bundles. Overall, this wasn't too bad an update. We got a healthy amount of earnable cosmetics, some rewards for finding the easter eggs and some new tattoos. Checking off the easter eggs was quite fun in my opinion and it was nice to have these contextualised. Gilded voyages are also a plus and really fun to do, provided you don't get your goodies next by some streamer. The Pirate Emporium was a bit bloated and the tomes were still annoying to obtain, but it was a pretty solid update overall. Cruise of Rage kicks off by adding the Chest of Rage, a cursed chest that explodes and sets fire to ships, people and skeletons when damaged but can be called off of water. A voyage associated with this chest was given out by Duke, one for each region of the map. The update also saw the introduction of the most useless fort in the game, Molten Sands. Molten Sands is at the most easterly point in the map and was plagued by an exploding volcano. Oh, and it was also the only active fort for February. Rare created some commendations to complement both of these activities. Again, five more tomes were added, this time the tomes of resurrection, with five more ash and dragon items. This was the last set of tomes, totaling 20 tomes total. Rare also added a set of legendary cosmetics, adding the parrot, kraken and ocean crawler hair and beards. The black market continued with wild rose and fearless bone crusher items for doubloons and ocean crawler items for gold. The pirate emporium introduced a much anticipated pirate appearance potion, allowing people to re-roll their pirates without losing progress. This was a good idea, However, I know some people didn't like the paywall, it sort of seems like creating a problem and selling the solution. On the other hand, it is really cheap. The Emporium also added a variety of Admiral Pet outfits, three emote bundles, the Reaper's Heart weapon set and the Paradise Garden ship set, themed around Viva Piñata. I think overall it was a good month, the introduction of the new chest that doubles as a tool is always nice in my book. The weakest part lies in the Tomes and Pirate Emporium, with very little earnable content. Oh f Flameheart turns up the heat with the Heart of Fire, and in my extremely biased opinion, I really love this update. I'm a sucker for the Sea of Thieves story, and despite the lack of longevity they create, tall tales are my favourite aspects of the game, especially with Flameheart involved. The main attraction was this wonderful tall tale, in which crews have to help free the crew of the Black Witch. This involves running a gauntlet of flames and traps, it had some very cool ramifications for the story also. It also came with two earnable rewards, the Ashen Dragon Hull and the Ashen Curse, which I personally spot on my pirate. Rare also debuted a new chain shot, an ammo type that can knock down ship's masts in one hit or heavily damage the anchor and wheel. 
This blew the meta wide open and added an extra level of complexity to ship combat. Along with this, the Blunder Bomb was also added, an impact grenade that produces knockback damage when thrown, which was seriously overpowered when used for defense purposes. Ramsey drew up some new voyages for Pirate Legends, and Athena run a Thieves Haven that involved multiple trips to Thieves Haven to receive some tributes to Athena's fortune. It did add a bit more variety to the Pirate Legend quests, but it was still pretty run of the mill. But hey, streamers made the most out of this one. This was bolstered by the Ghost Cannons, Capstan and Wheel available in the Hideout Shipwright, and a new costume, the Legendary Treasure Seeker, which was also exclusive to Pirate Legends. Duke began to stock the Aristocrat set instruments for doubloons, and the Inky Kraken, Nightshine Para, and Deep Ocean Crawler instruments for gold. As you can imagine, more of the same for the Pirate Emporium, the banana-themed crunch weapon set, two emote bundles, banana pet outfits, and the Royal Squirrel ship set, based on Conker's Bad Fur Day, were all added. I have to say, I am really biased in this opinion, but this was maybe the best update of the year. I just really enjoyed how Rare had orchestrated the tall tale. It was a shame, however, that it took so long to come out after Seabound Soul. Now, where to begin with this fantastic update? This is definitely the most innovative of the updates this year, and is even better coming off the back of March's update. Let's start with the Reaper's Bones Trading Company. Hang on, hang on, that's not working, is it? That's better. Let's start again. Let's start with the Reaper's Bones Trading Company. The masked stranger had disappeared from the Reaper's hideout with a new NPC replacing her, and the island is now fully constructed. The Reapers reject the other trading company's rules and accept almost any loot, encouraging you to take it from other pirates. The stakes are raised by the new emissary system, where players can raise a flag for each trading company to increase their gold and rep gain with each item being turned in. Emissaries have five levels. The higher the level, the better your reward multiplier is. What could go wrong? Well, when Reapers raise their flag and reach level 5, they can see every emissary on the map, and if you sink, your level resets and your flag becomes a piece of loot. The Reapers are rewarded heavily for turning in flags, but so do all companies if you choose to enroll in their emissary program. Upon reaching level 5, the Gold Hoarders gain access to some juicy X marks the spot maps, the Order of Souls get access to some easy skeleton captains, and the Merchants get two cargo maps of 10 crates each. You can gain rep from defeating AI threats, picking up loot, placing loot on your ship, killing skeletons, digging up chests, or in the case of Reapers, killing or sinking other emissary crews. Lastly, the three original companies level cap was raised to 75, the Reapers being 75 from the get-go and the Athena's fortune being raised to level 20. This came with a variety of new cosmetics for your ships, including cannons, capstans and wheels, based on the trading company's aesthetics. Oh, and each company got a specially themed costume. Pirate Legends got access to the legendary tools and instruments, and the ghost set tools, weapons and instruments. Arena also received a new update called Arena 2.0, in which one silver chest would spawn with a beacon similar to the Reaper's chest. This simplified the rules and encouraged more actual PvP, not just digging up multiple chests. Another new mechanic was released, Player Reviving, which allowed you to revive your crew and alliance members. I actually hated testing this, but when it came out it was actually a really nice addition to the game. The black market saw more inky kraken stuff and more fearless bone crusher items. The pirate emporium was more of the same, more pet outfits, two emote sets and the night wolf set based on sable wolf from killer instinct. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Wait, what? They added cats? Holy shit! Rare finally added cats which were teased way back in the art book with three breeds available. And yes, I did buy one, because it's good luck to have a cat on a ship. Overall, in my opinion, a fantastic update. This is what every monthly update should aspire to be, and it was really nice to have the progression expanded. The emissary system drives player interaction, which is one of the core pillars of the Sea of Thieves philosophy. This update, while not as massive as last anniversary's update, is easily top three of the updates since the monthly updates became a thing. Hats off to you, Rare. This had to be a bit of an off month. The pandemic was in full swing and good old blighty at this point and Rare was transitioning from the office to working from home at this point. This update added a few quality of life fixes, some cosmetics to complete the launch sets, and a modest Emporium update. Tall Tales now have checkpoints which is actually fantastic. No longer do you have to start again if you're sunk. Those bloody pirates, eh? Sinking you. Other major changes include an armory on the Ferry of the Damned, so you can plunder the ever-living f*** out of the person who just boarded you. The rowboat chest had a keybind change to stop you from sitting in them when trying to loot the storage chest. Oh fuck! And now, Alliance members now have a purple nameplate, so it's easy to see infiltrators now. I really didn't like this change, to be honest with you. The launch sets received cannons, flags, capstans and wheels finally, after what? 
over a year since the customization was expanded. The black market was, you guessed it, more aristocrat stuff and more nightshine pirate items. Can you see a theme here? The Modest Pirate Emporium update added the Ruby Splashtail costume, ship set and fishing rod. Personally, I am against selling law-based cosmetics for real cash, especially because there's no proper way of earning them. I feel like Rare could have let this one slide, but we'll see how it goes for the rest of the year. The best part of the update was the free emote, based on Joe Neitz, executive producer of Sea of Thieves, mannerisms in the dev update videos. God, I really miss them. Now you can cosplay as the legendary pirate himself. Overall, this update was advertised as a small one and should be reviewed as such. There's some nice changes, but overall nothing special, understandably so. It's like Rare knew I was going to make this video and came out swinging for June, just to get me to shut up. Haunted Shores surrounds Flameheart summoning ghost fleets to terrorise the waves from the Sea of the Damned. This is a new world event that sees crews taking on spectral ships patrolling islands while Flameheart shouts obscenities at them. The ghost ships take less damage than the skeleton versions, but fire flaming cannibals, spectral ghost balls, uh and wraith balls that scream at you, dealing massive damage. They also drop ghostly mines behind you and can sail straight through you, also dealing more massive damage. Your reward is suitably spooky treasure for all three factions, and a crate full of special ghost balls. Moving on. Rare finally added some more shanties, seven to be exact, including Stitch's Sorrow, Jolly Good Fellow, Maiden Voyage, Happy Birthday, 1812, We Shall Sail Together, and my personal favourite, Who Shall Not Be Returning. A smaller version of the Ghost Fleets can be spawned as an Order of Soul Voyage, where you fight a weaker version with less loot for your troubles. You can earn two, yes, two whole new sails for your trouble, the Burning Blade sails and the Ghost Captain sails, for defeating the Burning Blade 10 times and destroying 500 ghost ships respectively. The Black Market added, you know what, it's on the screen, you guys get it. The Pirate Emporium received the Blighted set based on State of Decay 2, Gold Cursed Pets and two new emote bundles. Also they added some Ghost Pet outfits exclusive to Pirate Legends. Wow. Thanks Ram. Glad I grinded hundreds of hours for the privilege to buy some pet costumes. Overall, another good update, but I think it would have been much better to have more stuff to earn tied with the event. I think at this point the Pirate Emporium is starting to overstep the mark in terms of the balance between Erdebo and Premium Cosmetics. Uh, you'll see later on, but more of these events please. Flameheart cranks up the thermostat by introducing his four lieutenants, the Ashen Lords. Old Horatio, Red Roof, Warden Chi, and Captain Grimm return to rain fire on the seas. The Ashen Lords are world events that display a fiery cyclone above the island they are populating. They essentially act as skeleton lords with new attacks. They also have three phases. Their attacks include a melee attack, a jumping melee, the knockback explosion attack, two fireball lobs, summoning skeletons, creating a blanket of ash, a bloody flamethrower, and summoning a meteor storm as if a volcano were erupting. Once killed, you get a decent amount of ash and loot and a fucking flamethrower skull. It's pretty useless, but it's pretty metal. You can sell it to the Order of Souls 2, which is the wisest thing to do. The encounter brought four new tattoos and another sale livery, the Ash and Wind Sale. Here's the mandatory black market stuff too. The Pirate Emporium introduced two emote sets, some Ash and Curse pets, and some pet outfit bundles. This is a similar theme with before, adding a great encounter but no real incentive for completing it. While we got a bit of lore and a cinematic fight, the Ashen Lords did have far too much health at launch, and they are fun fights but don't get me wrong, players aren't adequately rewarded for completing them, especially with the low value loot and the minor earnable cosmetics. Rare expanded the Gold Hoarders Voyages with the Vaults of the Ancients Voyages. This brought back the Tall Tale Vaults as Treasure Vaults, in which crews are tasked with tracking down a key to open the vault. This is done using a compass that points to a map fragment. Players have to find map fragments until the key is revealed, as an X marks the spot. Once you find the key, you can return it to the Gold Hoarders or use it to open the vault. Of course you're going to open the vault with it. When you open the vault, you will see a shipload of treasure featuring chests, trinkets and gold piles. You have 90 seconds to grab as much as you can before the door closes and starts filling the chamber with water. Along with this, there are three medallions that can open a valuable chest of ancient tribute, which can be sold for a hefty amount of gold. Track down the three medallions and turn the columns to reveal the prize. Again, a pair of sales are up for grabs in this update for selling 50 chests of ancient tribute and opening 100 volts. That is one hell of a grind. Oh, and lore fans will appreciate the introduction of Lorena, the leader of the Build Rats. She will take over from Duke at this point and act as your black market dealer. Speaking of which, I really feel like I should have done a separate section for this because Christ is it mundane. The Pirate Emporium finally introduces dogs, to which people surely enjoyed. These included Alsatians, Whippets and Inus. As far as the microtransactions go, these are actually pretty cool. 
they also came with their fair share of outfits. Rare also saw fit to release the Shrouded Ghost ship set, costume and blunderbuss. They also added a new emote pack for the Hunter's Call. There's definitely a theme here. Rare adds a nice activity for us to do, accompanies it with grindy rewards and very little earnable cosmetics at that, and fills the premium store up to the brim. I understand they have to make money, they are a business after all, so I'll have none of that in the comments, but did they really have to add the Shrouded Ghost set into the Emporium? Hmm, I don't think so. But hey, at least the Vaults of the Ancients was a really, really fun update, and to be honest with you, it was a nice way to repurpose the content that was no longer in use. The penultimate update of the year, not to be confused with the Fall of the Damned, which was actually sick, is probably the worst update of the year. This added a new voyage in which you had to track down Flames of Fate to defeat Grey Marrow. Again. Grey Marrow is the boss again. The Void sees you find a dead build rat member who has a coloured flame of fate, and then another, and then you go to a final island to fight a really weak Grey Marrow. The colour of the flames changed each week, occurring in different regions too. This update did have more earnable cosmetics, including the Soul Flame weapons, lantern and crew costumes, and an earnable face paint too. From what I know or I've read online is that the insiders fought tooth and nail for these earnable cosmetics, as they were meant to be Emporium only. That's pretty shady if you ask me. They also decided to finish a Shark Hunter set, which is what, two and a half years after its introduction? You can buy the cannons, capstan and wheel at the ship right now. Black Market is on the screen, more of the same sets. Pirate Emporium again is more emotes, the Soul Flame ship set and skeleton pets and face paints. Face paints are yet another item that will be monetized in the future. I have to say, and I'm just going to be honest about it, this was an incredibly weak update and this definitely jaded many players in the community. The boring recycled content was a bad example of putting out content to justify an Emporium update. Speaking of which. There was no new content for November, but Rare made sure to drop loads of Pirate Emporium stuff, with a handful of minor bug fixes. Same stuff again, two emote packs, some pet outfits, and the Fighting Frog ship set. Can we really call this an update? I'm gonna say no, but if you're gonna add loads of premium stuff, throw us a bone next time please. Our final update is a rehash of last year's event. This brought a set of reused challenges about giving loot to other players and a list of challenges based around the 12 days of Christmas. These actually had some earnable stuff with them, including the order of souls and gold hoarders equipment and some jade dragon items, which are just ash and dragon recolors, but we won't tell anyone. We got some cool cannon flares, so your cannons can make some cool colors when you fire them. I actually think this is a really great idea, and what's even better is that you can just buy them at the ship, right? Guild of Voyages are back too, which is always nice until some streamer nicks your Athenas. The black market ceased to exist, finally after an eternity of drip feeding. The Pirate Emporium got some really cool ice themed cosmetics, including weapons, cursed pets, a ship set and emotes. There was also a new skeleton costume which turns the players into a skeleton. Fans have been clamouring for this for a while and making it exclusive to the Pirate Emporium is a bit of a kick in the teeth. Overall, better than the last update, but still characterised by weak activities and a bloated Emporium. Personally, I think if I had to describe 2020 of Sea of Thieves, it would very much be peaks and valleys. I'll remember it most as the Pirate Emporium being far too prominent and the Erdable stuff being really lacklustre. You might say these updates are free, yes, they are, but you cannot lock all the main cosmetics, a game that has been touted as a game based around cosmetics as progression, behind a paywall. It would be fine if we had loads to spend our coins on, but we actually don't. It's common for players to be sat on millions of gold at this point with no end in sight. You have some really great stuff here like Heart of Fire, Haunted Shores and Ships of Fortune, but when you compare it to the Hungering Deep to Anniversary, is it really better, especially when you have to look at the poor updates mixed in? I know Rare have been working from home and I'm thankful they can work on a game I love, but the microtransactions are not related to that. When you sit down and look at it, this sort of monetization can really ruin a game and I know I'm not the only one who's sick of it. Look what we got in the first year and compare that to 2020. The microtransactions were there to fund development, to expand the game, but all I can see is the money being spent on making more premium cosmetics. This is without bringing up the bugs, the hit reg, the server issues, all of that too. If you're so adamant you need money to support the game for years to come, you need to show people that they're going to get their money's worth. I have supported the game by buying things, maybe that's on me for throwing it away. I understand it's much easier to make cosmetics than fix bugs or produce new tall tales, which we haven't had one in 9 months and we aren't getting one soon either. You cannot keep asking for more and more each month when there's nothing to show for it. 
I hope 2021 is a different ball game because this year has been all over the place. It's sad to see such fantastic updates being tarnished by such peaks and valleys. I hope you don't crucify me for this review, but my feedback is always meant to be honest. Remember, it's important to be able to stand back and criticise something you love. If you made it this far, please consider dropping a like and subscribing for the algorithm. What were your favourite updates in Sea of Thieves in 2020? Please let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to respond to all of them. I hope you all had a fantastic new year and thanks again for watching.